Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, and also welcome to my brand new Vim series. In this series, I'm teaching you everything that you need to know when it comes to using Vim on a daily basis. This series is targeted towards Vim beginners, and what I'm going to do is teach you everything. So what I recommend you do is just take some notes, have some fun, and enjoy learning Vim. Last time, I showed you some of the basics of Vim, and this time, we're going to expand on that in this episode. So. You know what? I'm ready to go. So if you are too, let's go over to our terminal and learn more about Vim. All right. So at this point, let's just go through a quick refresher to make sure that you fully understand everything that we've gone over so far in the series. For example, to open Vim, we could simply type Vim just like that. And that gets us into Vim, as you can see right here. To quit out of Vim, what we could do is go to command mode by typing colon. And then we could type Q to quit out of Vim, just like this. And now we're back to the command line. So that's how we can open Vim, and that's how we can exit Vim. If we know the name of a file we want to edit, we could type Vim along with the file name if we're in the same directory as the file we want to edit, or we could type the full path and the file name if we're not. But as you can see, we could open Vim and go right into a file from the very beginning. And right here, I have opened a sample Samba config file that I used in another video that I'll be using as an example through the series. Whenever we open Vim, we start out in normal mode. Normal mode means that we can move around, as you can see. And there's a few other things that we could do as well. But one thing we can't do is start typing. If we do want to make actual changes to the file, we need to go into insert mode, which is where we'll be spending the majority of our time while we enter text into Vim. We can access insert mode by pressing I, and that gets us into insert mode, as you can see. Escape gets us out of insert mode, and if we want to enter insert mode and also append to the end of the file at the same time, if we hold shift and press A from normal mode, we'll be brought to insert mode, and the cursor will move to the very end of the current line. We also took a look at command mode in the previous video. Again, colon enters into command mode, W for write, Q for quit, or WQ if we want to write and quit at the same time. If we want to quit without saving changes, we could type Q and then exclamation mark to break out of the file without saving our changes. Anyway, with that refresher out of the way, let's expand on our knowledge and learn more about Vim. And to get started, we'll open up a file. I'll just use the same one again, may as well, it's right there anyway. So I have Vim right here, I typed Vim or I pressed the up arrow to recall the previous command, but it's the same command as last time. I'm using the vim command and I'm giving it an argument of a file name, a file name that I wanted to open. Now, one thing to know though, is that the file does not exist. It'll still work. It's just going to give you an empty window since the file doesn't exist. Anyway, let's go into the original file yet again and learn some more vim. Now, the first new concept that I want to introduce in this video is the concept of buffers. Now, this is something we're going to explore even deeper later on. So even if what I'm about to mention doesn't make sense right now, don't worry about it. It'll all make sense later. So what I'll do right now is just give you a basic summary of what a buffer is, and then we'll go into even more detail in a future episode. Now, here's the thing. Whenever you open Vim, you always have at least one buffer open. Even if you enter Vim by itself and you don't even give it a file name, you'll still enter into normal mode by default. And even in normal mode, you'll have a buffer open as well. You'll always have at least one buffer. Now, the simplest explanation of a buffer I can give you, at least for now, is that a buffer is very similar to an open file. It's a place for you to enter text. If you enter insert mode, you're entering text into a buffer. A buffer can be an existing file or a new one. But for now, the concept of a buffer won't be any different than any other text editor you may open. You open a text editor and you can start typing. Vim just refers to this as a buffer. There is a distinction that separates this from a simple open file in any other text editor, but that's a distinction that we'll cover later. For now, I just want to introduce the term buffer and have you memorize it. And what I'll also have you memorize is the fact that every time you are using Vim, you are always working with at least one buffer. And until we revisit this topic, you can think of a buffer as an empty file or an existing file that's open, ready to receive your input. 
Next, let's expand a bit on normal mode. If you recall, insert mode is the one in which you'll enter text, and you can return to normal mode by pressing escape. So again, I could type I to go to insert mode. I can also add the number two here like I did in the previous video just to make a change. But as you can see, I can enter into insert mode by pressing I on the keyboard and escape gets me back to normal mode. And one thing that you already know about normal mode is that you can undo by typing U on the keyboard, which will undo the most recent change. Now we're going to be exploring normal mode a little bit more in this video. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is the fact that you can delete a character by typing X. So if I press X right now, notice that one of the characters went away. And as I press X, over and over again, it's removing each individual character underneath the cursor. And to undo it, I could just press U over and over again until all the changes that I've made have been undone. So now you know a few different things you could do in insert mode. Other than switching to other modes, you could type U for undo. And what I just taught you is you could also press X to delete a character. Now another thing you could do is delete an entire line by pressing D twice in succession. So if you press DD, that line goes away. Whatever line the cursor is on is going to be completely deleted every time you press DD when you are in normal mode. So DD, 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 you get the idea. Now another thing you could do in normal mode is move the cursor around with the arrow keys, which you already knew. It's not really unique. You could do the same thing in insert mode as well. So if I go into insert mode, I could also press up, down, left, and right on the keyboard to move the cursor around as well. So that's the same in both insert mode and normal mode. However, when you're in normal mode, you have another method available to you when it comes to moving the cursor around the screen. And this mode is not available to you in insert mode. It might sound a little strange to some of you that are just starting out, but you could also move the cursor around with the H, J, K, and L keys. So for example, I pressed H, that moved the cursor to the right. J moves the cursor down. K moves the cursor up, and L moves the cursor to the right. And this might seem weird at first, especially since you could just use arrow keys to move the cursor around as you would with any other text editor. So you might be wondering why you would want to use H, J, K, and L instead of just using the arrow keys, especially considering the arrow keys are consistent between the modes, because again, it works in insert mode, and it also works in normal mode. If I do enter into insert mode, and then I try to type H, J, K, or L to move the cursor around, it's just going to type the letter that I'm pressing on the keyboard. So that doesn't help us in insert mode. But again, when it comes to normal mode, I could type H, J, K, or L to move up, down, left, or right. Now another benefit of this is that if you know how to touch type, then you probably know where the home keys are on your keyboard. When you're resting your fingers on the keyboard, all but one of the H, J, K, and L keys are already underneath one of your fingers. The H key will be to the left of your index finger when your fingers are resting on the home keys. So all but one are underneath your fingers. But even then, you only have to reach over one key to type H, and your other fingers are on the other keys anyway. So you have less muscle movement when it comes to using H, J, K, and L. It's just a matter of preference, though. I'll leave that up to you, but I just wanted you to be aware that you could do that. Now at this point, let's take a break from normal mode and explore command mode a little bit further. Anyway, I'll exit out of Vim and I'll list the storage of my current working directory. Just to remind you that I have these two Samba config files right here that I'll be using as examples in this video. But more particularly, what I'm going to do is demonstrate that you can easily combine files together with Vim. So if I wanted these files to be combined into one file, I can absolutely do that. So let's open up the first file, the smb.com file here, and pay attention to the last line. There's an include directive, and it's set equal to slash etsy slash samba slash shares.config, or .conf for short. Now I'm not going to give you a tutorial on Samba in this video because this series is about Vim, and I already have videos on my channel that cover Samba anyway. And you don't have to know Samba at all to understand what I'm doing here. I'm just using this file as an example, but the last line is including another file. So the shares.conf file that I have in my local home directory, if I wanted these files to be used by the server, I would just need to make sure they exist in the appropriate place. But again, that's neither here nor there because we're just using these files as examples. 
Now, this last directive is to include a file, but if I wanted to, you know, include the file by actually including it, you know, putting the contents of that file into this one and not have the configuration split between two files, what I could do is delete this line, dd, because I don't need that line anymore. I don't want to include that if I'm going to be adding that to this file anyway. And then I'll type a capital A that'll get me into insert mode while also moving the cursor to the end of the line. I'll press enter to go to a new line and enter again to add another new line. And to add the contents of another file into this one, what I'll do is press escape. That takes me back to normal mode. And then I'll type colon because I want to go into command mode. I want to enter a command. I want to tell them that it needs to do something. And what I want to do is read a file. So I'll type R for read and then the file name or the path and file name if it's not in my local directory. But what I did was name the file shares.conf. So that's what I'll type. And then watch what happens. And I have an extra line break here, so I'll just go to this line, dd for delete. But as you can see, I was able to grab that other file and I was able to read it and insert all of the contents of that file right here into this buffer. And now this buffer contains both of those files combined into one buffer. Now, just like you already know, I could type colon to go into command mode and then type W for write to save the file. But what that's going to do is overwrite the original file that I opened, and maybe that's not what I want. So what I can also do is give it a new file name. So what I'll do is just call it updated underscore file dot txt. I guess that's good enough. So I'll press enter to write the file to that new name. And it tells me that it did actually write that file. So let's quit out, colon Q. And of course I didn't save over the original file. So it's telling me there's unsaved changes. I'll just quit out of this and I'll add an exclamation mark at the end of Q, just like before to force quit out of Vim. Now, if I list my storage, I have three files. I have the smb.conf file. And I have the shares file right here. So those are the files that I started with. And if I cut out the contents of the updated file, the one that should contain the contents of both of the other files, it looks exactly like that. As you can see, we have both of the files because this was the content of the original file. And this section down here, these two sections here, they are a part of the second file. And now they're part of the same file that I named updated file.txt. So the takeaway here is if you want to add content to a file, and if that content already exists, what you could do is go into the file, move the cursor where you want the contents of that file to end up. If you do read a file, make sure you are in normal mode and then enter into command mode by typing colon, R for read, and then the file name. So if that was the file that I wanted to read into Vim and the contents of that file, if that file actually existed in the first place, would end up here in my current file. Now, I'm not going to save this file right here because I want to reset the example anyway, so I'll quit out without saving any changes. And what I'll do is show you yet another trick with Vim, and this one is a lot of fun. Now, what I'll do is just enter Vim without a file or anything because it doesn't really matter what file you have open, or even if you have a file open, we just need to be in Vim. And what I want to do is show you, believe it or not, that you can enter Linux commands from within Vim. Now, you might be wondering, why would I want to do that? I could just exit Vim, enter any commands that I want to enter, and then go back into Vim. And yeah, you can do that. But you don't have to exit Vim to enter in Linux commands. We could do that from within Vim. And I'll demonstrate. So if I type colon to go into command mode, and then I type exclamation mark, and then I give it a command, for example, ls, and then I press enter, it's going to give me the output of that command. It's actually going to run that command and then give me the output of that command. And when I press enter, it takes me back to Vim. So for another example, at least in the case of Debian, if I wanted to update the package repository index, then for that, I would run sudo apt update and I'll press enter. And right now it wants me to enter my password and it's executing that command. And then at the bottom, it says press enter or type command to continue. So I'll just press enter and now we're back in Vim. And this could be very useful if you are working with a file and maybe somebody asks you for help. Maybe they want you to look at a problem, enter a few commands or something to troubleshoot something. 
This means that you don't have to open another terminal window. You can just run commands from within Vim. How cool is that? And there we go. Episode number two in my new Vim series is all set. We've gone through even more about Vim. I hope you learned something in today's video. And if you're enjoying this series so far, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. You can become a patron. You can become a channel member. I really appreciate your support. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video. As soon as you're ready to move on to episode number three, I'll join you in that episode. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode.